From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Sportsline. And there's Sportsline on your television. Steve Lehman here with you. Glad you are here with us on this Monday night on News Channel 5 Plus. And what a scene yesterday at the PGA Championship down there in Tulsa with Justin Thomas coming back from seven shots down going into the day, ultimately winning it in a three-hole play over, playoff over Will Zalatoris. Just an amazing scene down there. It was an amazing event over the weekend. You feel for Mito Pereira, who lost it at the 18th with that double bogey, just you know, totally, totally melting down off the tee there. And then every subsequent shot thereafter goes from one up to not even in the playoff with those two guys. And that's something that you just wonder how long that scar is going to last for because you're right there on the cusp of winning a major championship. And that changes guys' careers, and it changes their trajectory, and now you're just another guy that finished this weekend. So a very, very difficult finish for him, a spectacular finish for JT, who gets his second major championship and first in five years since he won the PGA Championship back in 2017. And a guy who's played pretty well, but hasn't really been considered as one of the top players in the world over the last few seasons because other guys have played better. Well, maybe this sends him right back up that list and gives him a bunch of confidence heading into the summer now. There's other storylines from down there. We'll hear from Virgil Herring, our golf guy, coming up here on the program and get into some of those as well. You got NBA playoffs. You got the Stanley Cup playoffs going on. The Predators still trying to wrap up their season and what's going to happen. So a lot of things we can discuss here on the program tonight. 737-7767, the number. Titans getting back on the field this week. Organized team activities mean they can actually get on the field and practice, essentially. They get those few coveted days in the offseason where guys can show up and they actually get to go out on the field. They just have shorts on and, you know, jersey tops. It's not like they're in pads or anything, but they can run routes. They can get after drills. They can do things that try to lay the foundation of what this season is going to look like. And I think it's going to be an interesting next couple of days because it's been a tumultuous offseason around here. There's no other way to look about it. I mean, Derrick Henry's coming back from injury. He's the star of your team. The other superstar on offense, essentially demanded a trade to get out of here in A.J. Brown. The quarterback's coming off his worst game in two-tone blue. Came late to offseason workouts. I don't think that's a big deal, and I've stated that several times, but it's just another storyline that's come in. The team drafts a backup quarterback. That's become a huge storyline to everything that's going on. So it just hasn't been smooth over there at St. Thomas Sports Park this offseason, and that's something we're not used to. John Robinson and Mike Vrabel run a smooth ship. It is all about having guys on the same page as ownership, as management, as the coaching staff, as their teammates. That's what it's always been for the Titans under those two gentlemen's leadership. And not to say that it won't get back there this season, but it's just been a tumultuous few months for the Titans in this offseason for a team that won the AFC South for a second consecutive year last year and was the number one seed in the AFC before that loss to the Bengals in the divisional round. And it just begs the question, how do you feel about this team right now as they move into the offseason? How do you feel about the Titans right this second? Because we just haven't seen this from them. And I know they've got a bunch of those leaders back. I know they've got a bunch of good players back. I know we expect Derrick Henry to be 100%. But do you feel differently right now than you have the last couple of years? And I'll be honest, my answer is yes. For the first time in the last couple of years, I really feel like this offseason has been pulling that team in a whole bunch of different directions. And it doesn't mean they can't figure it out over the next few weeks before the summer ends, and they can't figure it out in training camp, and they won't win a bunch once the season starts. But for the first time, there is kind of this feeling of a few splinters coming off the two-by-four over there, if you will. And can they put it all back together when guys show up 
and when they get ready for the season is the million dollar question. It's felt like even when things have gone poorly and look, the draft classes the last two years weren't very good for the Titans. I have significant hopes that this draft class will be better and it, and it better be because now you're counting on that number one pick at wide receiver to be a replacement for A.J. Brown. You're counting on other guys in that draft class to step in and be a part of what you're doing right away. Nicholas petit Frere should be a guy that factors into the offensive line. Roger McCreary's got to be a guy that factors into what the Titans do on the back end defensively. Hassan Haskins has to play some. Chig Azonquo, Aconquo, excuse me, who they signed earlier today became the seventh of the nine draft picks. Well, conquo has got to figure into the offense. You know, he's not going to be ahead of Austin Hooper right now at tight end. But he's going to be a guy that has to play some reps, has to be a part of what they're going to do. But even when the draft classes had struggled the last couple of years, you felt like everything else was in place. You felt like the team's core was there. You felt like the leadership was good. You felt like they had total buy-in to what the offseason program was supposed to be and look like. And remember, it's voluntary. But these guys have been a part of it. And I, and I should back up that it's really before that. Because this is the first time we've had an offseason that looks like a normal NF offseason in three years. Because the last two years were so impacted by COVID. But even when they were impacted, it felt like, you know, Ryan Tannehill from his home in Florida with his family was standing up as a leader for this team. It felt like A.J. Brown was standing up as a leader. Now, he's not even here anymore. You've got all these guys that have felt like they were right there. And I, I think we'll see this team come back together this summer. I think we'll see them come together in the preseason. I expect them to win a bunch of games in the fall. But it does feel a little bit more like there's just stuff lying around the Titans this offseason than it has in the past few years. And I just wonder if that changes how you feel about this team as you get set for the season. 737-7767 is the number. The one thing I can say is despite the fact that the Titans had the best record in the conference last year, they were the number one seed. I don't think this schedule that they face is all that terrible. I obviously go in the AFC South, and I think the AFC South will be considerably better this season. Indianapolis can't help but be better with Matt Ryan. And I think they had a pretty good draft class. Jacksonville's got to be better. Travis Etienne got on the field today with them. He wasn't able to play at all last year as the other first-round draft pick along with Trevor Lawrence. you got to think he's going to be better in year two. I think Doug Peterson certainly is going to be a better fit in Jacksonville than Urban Meyer was because anyone would be a better fit in Jacksonville than Urban Meyer was. So you look at all that. The division is going to be more difficult, even though I think Houston is still going to struggle mightily coming into this season. But some of the other teams you face, I mean, yes, you go to Buffalo. Yes, you go to Kansas City. Both of those are going to be primetime games. I can't imagine the Titans will be favored in either one of those. Those are very difficult games. they got to go to Green Bay on a Thursday night primetime game. Probably not going to be favored in that one. Got to go to the Chargers in December. Probably not going to be favored in that one. But when you get beyond that and start to look at the other games outside of the division games on the road. And remember, the Titans won all of their road division games last year. You start to look beyond that, they go to Washington. That's a really, really good defense, but I don't think it's a team that necessarily scares you. They go to Philadelphia. It's going to be an interesting game for storylines with A.J. Brown now there but I don't think they necessarily scare you. That's what the road schedule looks like. And the home schedule? Giants. 
That seems like an opening week win. You've got the Raiders. Good team, but that game at home, game you got to think that the Titans can win. Broncos, Russell Wilson, we'll see exactly what he changes for them. But you got to feel good about that game here. You got the Bengals back here. You know, everybody circled that game on the calendar. And you have the Cowboys here. I mean, they're good teams on that schedule. But I think the ones you get at home are the ones you feel like you can win and what should be a good environment if they continue to win games to start the season. So it's a it's not an easy schedule, but considering it could have been a really tough schedule, I think they got a little bit of a break for this season. I think the teams they ended up grabbing aren't awful. There are other harder schedules out there coming into the 2022 season. We go to the phone line, say hello to Gary. Gary, what's going on? Yes, can can Ryan can him win the Super Bowl? That is the $64 million question you're asking there. I don't know. I, I said this immediately when he lost in the game against the Bengals, Gary, is he's got to show it to me now. As good as he's been in the regular season, he's not gotten it done in the playoffs. And until he now shows me he can win a game, if a team's able to bottle up Derrick Henry or what have you, until Ryan Tannehill shows that he can win that game for the Titans, I don't know if I believe it. Okay. Do you, right. think, do you think how long his contract is? Well, he's got two years left. This year he's got a massive cap hit because they restructured it in order to make the Julio Jones trade happen last year. So Tannehill's definitely the quarterback this year because of that. They have another year on the contract, but if they want to get out of it at the end of this coming season, they could certainly make that happen if that's what they want. And if they want to move on to Malik Willis or if they want to draft somebody else or if they think they can get a guy in free agency, that may happen. But Ryan Tannehill will be the quarterback for this year and possibly one more under his current deal. I hope he do something better. Yeah. No, there's no question, Gary, and we appreciate the call. Everybody would like to see Ryan Tannehill do better in the postseason, and it is simply a postseason criticism. I know people will look at last year and say, okay, he didn't have as good of a regular season as he had in 2019 or 2020, and there's no question about it. His numbers were not as good last year. They, they were not good. It was not a good statistical season for Ryan Tannehill. But then you have to look at what was on the field with him. I mean, the offensive line gave up a whole bunch more sacks last year than they did the two previous seasons. He had a new offensive coordinator. His star running back, who was leading the league in touches, yards, and touchdowns, missed the last nine games of the regular season. His best wide receiver missed four games. His second best wide receiver credit missed seven games. And he didn't have a tight end option that was really viable in the passing game. That's what he had on the offense last year. And he still managed to lead this team to a division championship and the best record in the AFC while he himself playing every game despite taking some of that beating. So no, the stats weren't as good as a whole last year, but I still think Ryan Tannehill has played a largely good football at the quarterback position for the Titans. The thing is, and I think we've seen it here, is there's a big difference between winning in the regular season in the NFL and being able to win multiple weeks in a row in the postseason. You know, week in and week out, it's about consistency. It's about not hurting yourself. It's about not turning it over. It's about not having those penalties and showing up and doing what you do week in and week out. You get to the postseason and every week is about matchups and it's about scheming up and coming up with that trick that fools the defense or fools the quarterback. And that's what the postseason's all about. You got to win one absolute heavyweight battle to get to the next one, to get to the next one, and maybe another one after that. That's what the playoffs are all about. And I think we've seen that the Titans have struggled to be in that situation the last couple of years with home field advantage after winning the division. 
You're looking at a team that just hasn't performed, and they haven't performed offensively. And that includes Derrick Henry. But remember, the second time around, Henry was coming off of an injury that kept him out for 10 weeks before he had played a game. Remember when he was healthy in 2019, he ran for over 400 yards in three playoff games. He got the Titans to the AFC Championship and had them a lead in the first half of that game against the Chiefs on the road. I think Derrick Henry's proven that he can perform in the playoffs. And if healthy, you can imagine he can do so. But here's the thing. Everybody else in the league understands that. The defenses will be loaded for bear. And when you get to the playoffs, you're not facing a lot of defenses that are 28th in the league. You're generally facing teams that have good players on that side of the ball. They can get it done over there. And they're going to be loaded for bear to try to stop number 22. And what has happened the last two years when that has essentially happened, whether it be the Ravens two years ago or the Bengals last year in the divisional round, Ryan Tannehill has been unable to rise to the occasion to lead the Titans to a victory. And in particular, in that Cincinnati game, he threw three costly interceptions. One on the first play of the game that led to a Cincinnati field goal. One, when the Titans were in the red zone, inside the 10-yard line, in fact, in the second half, taking points off the board. And then one in the final 20 seconds of the game when the Titans had the ball themselves with a chance to drive the field for the game-winning field goal themselves. He throws it into traffic. It gets picked off. Burrow to chase, 20 yards. Field goal splits the uprights and the Bengals win and ultimately head on to the Super Bowl. A lot of Titans fans out there are thinking, I got to see it to believe it with Tannehill. They could have worse quarterbacks. There's no question about it. There are a lot of worse quarterbacks week in and week out in the NFL than what the Titans have in Ryan Tannehill. But when you start talking about the quarterbacks, that even when things are going against you, can win you a game with their arm in the postseason, maybe multiple weeks in a row, to me that's a pretty short list. We've seen some guys who can do it. Brady, obviously. Aaron Rodgers. Russell Wilson. Those guys are obvious players in that. But think about how many guys who had done that, that are now out of the league because they've retired here recently. Drew Brees, Ben Roethlisberger, you've lost some of those. Josh Allen can win. Patrick Mahomes can win. They're kind of in the younger range here. But, (coughs) excuse me, how many other quarterbacks in the league can win you multiple games like that? I don't know. It's not an enormous number, and at the moment... I don't know if you can include Ryan Tannehill in that number. He's got to prove it. He's got to win in the postseason. And look, when he talked a couple weeks ago, he understands that as well as anybody. He said he was in a dark place after that game because he knew the opportunity that they had and that he didn't play his best. And he also understands that whatever happens this season, whatever he does between, frankly, now and the offseason program into January, Whatever he does will not matter unless he wins in January. He can have a great season. If he drops it again in the playoffs and the Titans lose early, and you can point to him as a big reason why, I don't see a way he's back here for 2023. I think they'll get out of that contract, and whether it's Malik Willis or going in the draft next year or trying to figure out something in free agency, I think the Titans move on because I think when they look at this team, when they look at the defense, when they look at Derrick Henry, I think they see pieces that can win a Super Bowl. They think they're in that window, but that window only stays open for so long. They don't have another choice this year. That is the quarterback they've got to roll with. They have to roll with Ryan Tannehill. But how long will they let that go? 
That is the question. And it's going to be up to what Ryan Tannehill does on the field this year. How he plays will determine what we see. All right, phone lines are open. 737-7767, the number. We can talk more Titans if you'd like. We can also talk some college baseball. Getting set for the postseason. More on that straight ahead here on Sportsline on News Channel 5+. Plus. <laughs> 